What's up guys, this is Maurice Ager, and thanks for visiting the site, mauriceager.com. So, five years since you left the NBA, and you've reinvented yourself, even knowing you could go back and play. So, how, how did you do that? Uh, for me personally, I think it was, it was just a decision. You know, I, I feel like I, I came to a point in my life where I was just ready to move on. I was ready to do more with my life. I felt like I had more to offer the world. And for me personally, music is one of those things that I always kept close to me. And um, so for me to have this opportunity to get released from the Minnesota Timberwolves a year before the NBA lockout, I took it as an opportunity to not only pursue my passion in music, but also to do something other than just basketball in my life. I felt like it was important for me to spread my wings, but it was most certainly a crossroad moment for me. Uh, I had a decision to make. Um, I had a choice to either go over and play in China. I had an opportunity to go back to the NBA, but me, I just followed my heart. And um, that was the most important thing for me, just to follow my heart. And um, when I made that decision, everything else seemed to basically steamroll after that. You know, I made a lot of decisions and mistakes, but ultimately it brought me to a place where I felt comfortable with my decision to leave the NBA to reinvent myself. So how I reinvented myself, years and years of just blood, sweat and tears, study, prayer, meditation, um, trials and error, and um, and I'm still learning, you know, it's, just, it's still the beginning for me, but ultimately it's very important that if you're going to do anything in life, I, I think it's key that we all take the time to reinvent ourselves. I feel like every three or four years we should take the time and, and reevaluate ourselves and see like, hmm, where can I improve? How can I become a better me? So for me, I just wanted to challenge myself. It's it's one thing to play basketball your whole life, but it's, it's another to actually create your own business, own your own business, and be an entrepreneur and still have the ability to take the sports and the music and still package it and bring it into something that's not only lucrative for myself, but beneficial to the world. So for me, it was very, very, very minute for me to use my talents to give back. So at this point in my life, I've taken sports, music, and um, just creativity in general, just to be able to use that as a tool to give back to, to not only the youth, but young adults as well. So that's pretty much how I re reinvented myself and you know, we're still working. So it's a, it's a wonderful journey. So part of that journey, you talk about transforming yourself, <clears throat> the transformation that took place over the past few years. How would you define transformation? Transformation for me is, is the most important thing. In order to make any significant any significant change in your life you have to look at your life and look at some of the things that's no longer serving you so for me i had to improve my health i had to improve my spiritual awareness i had to improve my studies i had to really discipline myself because not only am i an entrepreneur i didn't have the opportunity the or the cushion to lean on those forty thousand dollars checks a month for an nba so me personally i had to get on the ball so I had to start waking up at three or four in the morning to study, meditate. I had to look at some of the things that I could sacrifice in my life. For me personally, <clears throat> um, years ago, I used to be a binge drinker. So I was getting mediocre results. Uh, I just wasn't making the best decisions I could have made at that time. And um, that was one thing that I looked at in my life that if I actually um, got rid of, my life would go a lot smoother. I felt like my life would be a lot more richer and um, to my credit it has been I feel like the floodgates have opened tremendously since I've made a decision to give up liquor and and just live a more modern lifestyle I believe indulgence is the killer of all men with ambition so for me I had to make that decision to make that sacrifice and uh, I feel like my health has gotten better I feel like my spiritual walk has, has increased I feel like my decisions have increase and I feel like my life is really shaping so that was just an example for me I think it's very important in your transformational period and um, for anyone you know you have to look at yourself and yourself only and um, for me personally I had to do it for me Cause for years I was doing it for other people and it's very difficult to, do it, to sustain anything if you're doing it for other people in the sense that if you're doing it you're going to satisfy that person and um, the older I the, the more I mature I'm realizing that you can never satisfy someone else. You have to really do it for you. And once you get yourself right, it's a lot easier to be able to help others. It's a lot easier to be able to walk in that light and have others follow you. You know, it's, sometimes we feel that if 
we change the person, the circumstance will change, but it's always, it always goes back to the person. And uh, Michael Jackson said it best, it's the man in the mirror. So for me, um, transformation has been constant study, constant reminders of who I want to be, the direction I want to go in my life, and um, who I want to lead. And it all boils down to w what's your purpose. We all define our own purpose based upon the choices we make throughout our life. So I want to be a leader for the youth. I want to be able to help people take themselves to the next level. I want to be able to be an example for individuals to know that if you put your mind to something, you can do it. I want to be that leader in the world that if you have mishaps or mistakes in your life, ups and downs, that you can overcome them. Some of the best things have ever happened that's ever happened in our um, society have come from the droughts, the Great Depression. What happened? The entertainment business boomed. Right now we're going through a quote unquote recession. We're breeding more and more entrepreneurs. So I, I truly believe it's very important that we take our mistakes and value those mistakes and use them to propel us to the next level. Because if I didn't get a DUI back in 2012, 11, whatever, I don't know what might have happened. I might not have shaped my life, but I chose that opportunity to get my life together, to really to make a decision on who I wanted to be and who I wanted to impact. And, um, and that was a decision I made and that was a transformation for me. So in the midst of being reflective upon how certain circumstances shaped you and helped you transform yourself, you're all, you also reflect on how teamwork plays a role. You've been in <coughs> two major venues, sports and music. How have you seen teamwork play a role in those successes for you? Um, most importantly, I believe teamwork makes the dream work. That's a saying I like to say. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work, and it's very important. If you look at my dream team, my dream team is full of successful individuals from Mark Cuban to Keon Dooling all the way over to Scott Page who played with um, a f extremely famous band called Pink Floyd and um, I think it's, it's monumental. You're only as good as your team um, technically because you can't do it alone. I've tried to do it alone myself in music. I've tried to do it alone when I was younger as a child in basketball. I used to work on my game a lot and I used to work on my game a lot by myself so the time I had the opportunity to play um, organized basketball when I was 12 years old, I had a hard time playing with the other team. It was difficult for me. I was a ball hog. I didn't know when to pass the ball. I didn't know when to shoot. It was just really awkward for me. So I had to learn how to play within the team structure before I became a, a good player. And uh, it's just very important. I had to learn to trust. I had to learn to be vulnerable. I had to learn to understand that it's not all about me. So when you think about different organizations that have success, such as the Airbnbs, I had the opportunity to speak at the Airbnb and um, and I witnessed how, how important culture is. I had a great opportunity to see and feel the culture of Airbnb and I see now why they're uh, a extremely successful company. And then you have teams like the San Antonio Spurs. These guys are a unit. They spend time with each other off the court. They spend time with each other during the off season. They play laser tag with each other. They, they do a lot of things as a, as a team. So um, it, it's so important. Team building is one of the most important things when trying to do something special. I think about Motown. When the Motown first created, it was a team. You had the Smokey Robinsons. You had the Marvin Gaye's. You had Barry Gordy. You had Diana Ross. But these guys, they treated each other as a family. And to this day, we respect their music because of the camaraderie, the, the team, the team, the team. And every hit record, it's always 10, 12 people involved. Even from Michael Jackson, you know, you have the bass player. You may have the one guy who's mixing a record. You may have the one guy who's just running to the store to get the coffee for the guys at the studio. You may have the, the one person in the studio who's just like, man, I'm, I'm not really feeling that. He's the honest guy, but he's a part of the team. So in basketball, Michael Jordan couldn't do it alone. Kobe couldn't do it alone. Stephen Curry couldn't do it alone. It takes the shooters. It takes the glue guy. It takes the good defenders. It takes the tough guy. It takes that one individual who's who's not afraid to be the leader of the team. So um, it's very important. So uh, for me, being able to witness greatness and um, not only sports, but in a business world, uh, it's all about the culture. It's creating that culture. It starts from the top and it trickles down to the bottom. You're good as your team. Teamwork makes a dream work. So say I'm not in sports or music. 
how does that cross over to the to today's workforce, today's industry? Um, just like I said, I think it's very important that whoever your leader is, they have to not only hone in on what they want the company to look like or the team, they have to understand that the company or the team is only going to be as good as the leader. The leader of whatever team it is or company, they have to understand that you can't expect your employees or your players to do something that you're not willing to do. I remember going to practice every single day and seeing Mark Cuban on a Stairmaster before we got there. And this is before they won a championship. And, um, and it was just amazing to see. If we had practice for two or three hours, Mark Cuban was there. Whenever we came upstairs from that practice facility, Mark Cuban was still on that Stairmaster sweating looking at the news, but he was there and he was showing us as a leader that if I'm going to be on this road with you guys, I'm going to be here. He rode on the planes with us. So we, I, I had an opportunity to sit with Mark Cuban every single day on the plane and watch this man write emails throughout the whole night just so he can spend time with us as we hit the road games or it won't, say, if we, say if we go to Chicago all the way from Dallas, I'm asleep. Mark Cuban is on the phone. He was on the sidekick, just writing t emails. And one time I woke up, I'm like, hey, man, how are you on the computer right now? How are you even sending emails right now? And he would tell me, like, no, I just save them all of my draft. So by the time we land, I can spend more time with you guys. We can go do dinner. We can hang out. I get an opportunity to really build with you guys. And for us, we wanted to play harder. We wanted to be able to make Mark Cuban proud. We wanted to be a manifestation of what Mark Cuban decided for us to be as far as the culture. So it's very important that we build that culture. So part of that culture, it seemed like you was in the zone. In, in your album, you talk a lot about being in the zone. So just elaborate on that. What is it? What is that and how does that look to you? Being in the zone, in the zone with Mo Ager, yes. Um, it's very important. Being in the zone is almost as being in the flow. It's almost like being in your moment. And for me, I think, I'm not gonna say I think, I know the most successful games that I've had in my life is when I was relaxed and I prepared and I was truly in the zone. It's almost like something flowed through me and it was positive. It was something positive that flowed through me that I wasn't forcing anything. I would have 30 points and it felt like, like wow, it felt light, it felt easy. But I prepared. I think preparation is the most important thing in the world when it comes to getting yourself in the zone. Steph Curry, you know, he may not leave the gym until he make a thousand jump shots. So if he making game winners with his eyes closed, he's in a zone because you know what? It's muscle memory for him. So if you are in a zone, that means that you can close your eyes and just see it. It was times when I was a child, I would see myself making the game winners. It happened then. When I was in my basement playing on the Fisher Price room, I would see myself making the game winners in the final four. I would see myself making game winners in college and hitting big shots to take it to overtime. And, and I would see myself getting drafted. So I got myself in the zone early. So it, it technically starts from within. So if it, if it starts from within, obviously it has to manifest from without. But you have to get yourself in the zone. So two or three ways that I get myself in the zone is, for one, I study. I study whatever it is I need to know about whatever subject it is. It can be basketball, it can be speaking, it can be um, music, whatever it is. I, I get myself in the zone, I get the knowledge, I get the know-how, I understand that. And then I meditate on it. I spend 20 minutes to an hour to sometimes two or three hours out a day just to, in quiet time to get myself right. To quiet my thoughts, talk to God, pray with God, ask for the things that I want in my life to happen. And uh, I see it happen. I have creative visualization, I'm sorry. I creatively visualize these things in my mind and it happens in real life and it never fails just because I align myself with it. And that's what it means to be in a zone. So I think being in a zone is just a cool way of saying of just being locked in and motivated and inspired all at the same time. So if I, I wrap all this top to bottom, you know, you look at the road you traveled some could say, oh, why leave the NBA in your prime? You're not hurt, you're not injured, you could still play. So what do you say to the people who, who take a low road less traveled and, and find success along the way? Um, I think you have people in the world that um, follow the crowd, and you have individuals who are born to be trailblazers. 
and I believe I was born to be a trailblazer. I think I have enough endurance, enough strength, enough heart, enough faith, enough knowing, and enough power that comes from God that I can do it. I believe I can be the first NBA basketball player to win a Grammy. I believe it and I know it. And it's a faith there, but it's a faith that turns into a knowing because I already visualized it in my mind. I believe that I can be one of the first professional NBA basketball players that can be an, a successful speaker, that can be an, a successful entrepreneur. And it's been plenty before me and kudos. But musically, I feel like I have so many things to accomplish through music and with music. Not only to give back to teach other kids that through the arts, you can do anything that you possibly can imagine, but more importantly that there's not one thing that you can do. I believe we can do many things. I believe limitations should be abolished. So for me personally, leaving the NBA at the age of 26, to pursue something else was just another opportunity for me to show the world that. And it is difficult at times. There's, yes, it's very difficult. There's times where it's scary. There's times when um, I truly am uh, afraid at times, but ultimately I ask God and he brings me through it. But moreover, it's so important that we realize that there's no limitations on who we can be, what we can be, how we can achieve it, because we have been placed in, um, in boxes throughout society to tell us that oh, you have to go this way in order to be successful. So you have to do this in order to be successful. I beg to differ. I believe there's millions of ways of doing it. And I think the best way of doing it is the road less travel. So how do you take the road less travel? You have to get rid of the limiting beliefs. You have to de develop a sense of knowing. I, I truly believe when you believe in yourself so strong to a point where it, you're, you know you're in a knowing, you, you know that you're going to accomplish something. You don't necessarily know the how, but you know that I'm going to get there whether I fail a million times, but you just know it. You'll be successful. And just like my good friend Eric Thomas says, he said, once you're at a point where you want to be successful so bad to the point where you, it's like breath, it's like breathing. And um, that's very important for you. Once you're willing to lose the game, that's when you know you'll be successful. I came to a point in my life where I was not afraid to lose. I was not afraid to go through turmoil. I was not afraid to go and walk through the valley again in order to accomplish my dreams because once I made that decision for me it wasn't no going back. It just wasn't going it just was no going back. My plan A was my plan A. So there's a small percentage of individuals who can not only make it to the NBA but still be Grammy nominated. So yeah, I'm extremely excited for those who are taking this journey with me because it's an amazing journey and I think right now I'm learning to live in the moment because sometimes we can see ourselves be something already but sometimes we just have to take a step back and just enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. It's the power of now, man. Shout out to Eckhart Tolle but um, yeah, I'm truly excited. Thanks guys for tuning in. This is Maurice Ager. Make sure you guys check out the website. Check out my beautiful Dream Team members. And um, stay tuned. We have a lot to go.